The Russian perimeter system, known in the United States and Western Europe as the Dead Hand, is an automatic control system for a massive nuclear retaliatory strike. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. The system was created back in the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War. Its main purpose was to guarantee a nuclear retaliatory strike even if the command posts and communication lines of the strategic missile forces were completely destroyed or blocked by the enemy. With the development of nuclear weapons of monstrous power, the principles of global warfare have undergone serious changes. Just one missile with a nuclear warhead on board could hit and destroy a command center or a bunker housing the enemy's top leadership. Here one should consider, first of all, the U.S. doctrine, the so-called decapitation strike. It was against such a strike that Soviet engineers and scientists created a system of guaranteed retaliatory nuclear strike. The perimeter system, created during the Cold War, went on combat duty in January 1985. It was a very complex and large organism that was dispersed over Soviet territory and constantly kept many parameters and thousands of Soviet warheads under control. At the same time, about 200 modern nuclear warheads would be enough to destroy a country like the United States. The Soviet Union began to develop a guaranteed retaliatory strike system also because it became clear that in the future electronic warfare means would only be continuously improved. There was a threat that they would eventually be able to block the regular control channels of the strategic nuclear forces. Thus a reliable backup communication method was needed that would guarantee the delivery of launch commands to all nuclear missile launchers. The idea emerged to use special command missiles that would carry powerful radio transmitting equipment instead of warheads as such a communication channel. Flying over Soviet territory, such a missile would transmit commands to launch ballistic missiles not only to command centers of the strategic missile forces, but also directly to numerous launchers. On August 30, 1974, a closed decree of the Soviet government initiated the development of such a missile, the task was given to the Yuznoi Design Office in Dnipropetrovsk, this design office specialized in the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Command Missile 15A11 of Perimeter System Yuznoi SDO specialists used as a basis the UR-100 UTTH, NATO codification, Spanker, Trotter, ICBM. The warhead with powerful radio transmitting equipment designed specifically for the command missile was developed at the Leningrad Polytechnic Institute, and the NPO Strela in Orenburg was engaged in its production. A fully autonomous system with a quantum optical gyrometer and an automatic gyro compass was used for azimuth aiming of the command missile. It was able to calculate the necessary flight direction while the command missile was put on alert, these calculations were retained even in case of nuclear impact on the launcher of such a missile. Flight tests of the new missile were launched in 1979 and the first launch of the missile with a transmitter was successfully performed on December 26. The tests proved the successful interaction of all components of the perimeter system, as well as the ability of the command rocket head unit to maintain a given flight trajectory. The top of the trajectory was at an altitude of 4,000 meters at a range of 4,500 kilometers. In November 1984, the command rocket launched from near Polotsk managed to transmit a launch command to a silo launcher near Baikonur. The Air 36M ICBM, NATO codification SS 18 Satan, took off from the silo after all the stages were processed and the warhead successfully hit the target in a given square at the Kara test site in Kamchatka. In January 1985 the perimeter system was put on combat duty. Since then the system has been upgraded several times, and modern ICBMs are now used as command missiles. The command posts of this system appear to be structures that are similar to standard missile bunkers of the strategic missile forces. They are equipped with all the control equipment necessary for operation, as well as communication systems. Presumably they can be integrated with the command missile launchers, but most likely they are spaced far enough apart on the ground to ensure better survivability of the entire system. The only widely known component of the perimeter system is the 15P011 command missile, and it is indexed 15A11. It is the missiles that are the backbone of the system. Unlike other intercontinental ballistic missiles, they should fly over Russia and not in the direction of the enemy, 
Instead of thermonuclear warheads they carry a powerful transmitter, sending a command to launch all the available combat ballistic missiles of different basing, they have special command receivers. The system is fully automated, and the human factor in its operation has been minimized. The decision to launch command missiles is made by an autonomous command and control system, a highly sophisticated software system based on artificial intelligence. This system receives and analyzes a huge volume of various information. During combat duty, mobile and stationary control centers in a vast territory constantly assess a lot of parameters, radiation level, seismic activity, air temperature and pressure, control military frequencies, recording the intensity of radio communication and negotiations, monitor the data of the missile warning system MWS, as well as control telemetry from the surveillance posts of the strategic missile forces. The system monitors point sources of powerful ionizing and electromagnetic radiation, which coincides with seismic disturbances, evidence of nuclear strikes. After analyzing and processing all incoming data, the perimeter system is able to autonomously decide whether to launch a retaliatory nuclear strike on the enemy, of course, the combat mode can also be activated by top officials of the Ministry of Defense and the state. For example, if the system detects multiple point sources of powerful electromagnetic and ionizing radiation and compares them with data on seismic disturbances in the same places, it can come to a conclusion about a massive nuclear strike on the territory of the country. In this case, the system will be able to initiate a retaliatory strike even bypassing Kazbek, the famous nuclear suitcase. Another scenario is that the perimeter system receives information from the SRN about missile launches from the territory of other states, and the Russian leadership puts the system on alert. If there is no command to turn the system off after a certain time, it will start launching ballistic missiles on its own. This solution eliminates the human factor and guarantees a retaliatory strike against the enemy even if the launch crews and senior military commanders and leaders of the country are completely destroyed. According to Vladimir Yaranik, one of the developers of the perimeter system, it also served as insurance against a hasty decision by the top leadership to launch a retaliatory nuclear strike based on unverified information. Having received a signal from the SRN, the top leadership of the country could launch the perimeter system and wait quietly for further developments, while being absolutely certain that even if all those who had the authority to order a retaliatory attack were killed, the retaliatory strike could not be prevented. Thus, the possibility of a retaliatory nuclear strike being ordered in the event of unreliable information and false alarms was completely ruled out. The Rule of Four Ifs According to Vladimir Yaranik, he does not know a reliable way to disable the system. The perimeter control and command system, all its sensors and command missiles are designed to work in conditions of a real nuclear attack by the enemy. In peacetime the system remains in a quiet state, one could say in sleep, while still analyzing the vast array of incoming information and data. When the system is put into the combat mode or in case of receiving an alarm signal from the strategic missile forces, the strategic missile forces and other systems, it starts monitoring the network of sensors, which should detect signs of nuclear explosions that have occurred. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.